Happy Monday. This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and I sound like junk because I tested positive for COVID on Friday. So, I'm not going to talk very much today, but uh, I'm just going to intro this video, and then we'll get started. This is our 289 build. I finally got our crankshaft back from the crank grinder, and I'm in the process of remiking all the journals and checking bearing clearances and my goal for today is to get the crank in the block so i'm not feeling too hot but i'm gonna chip away at it and uh hopefully by the end of the week we'll be ready to rock and roll on some on some progress but right now uh calico coated main bearings I had to have the crank touch ground because we were just too tight on the clearances. And the uh, crank has been washed. Um, I usually take a, a drill with a very tiny bore brush and run it through all the journals. And then back that up with some solvent and some air to clean it. But we are clean and we are checking bearing clearances. So I've already got the first one done. I'm gonna roll through and check the other four. All right, so when you have a good crank grinder, he can do things like this. I had him take off, I think a little, about a thou or a little bit under a thou off the mains. And um, he, nailed, he nailed it. I mean, all the bearing clearances are within one ten thousandth of an inch of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this crank in the block Okay, so I have an SCE rear main cell in. You can tell that the lip is facing to the front of the engine, which is correct. You need to get some lubricant on that seal. You cannot have a dry seal on startup unless it is a Teflon uh, seal. They are meant to go on dry. This one is not. So we get our bearings lubed up and we'll get our crankshaft in. All right, I got some Maxima assembly lube on here. Pretty nice, it smells like cinnamon. And I'm also excited because I can smell it. But uh, you can see that the, the rear main seal is lubricated as well. So now we can go ahead and set our crank in. All right, caps, caps are going on. This is the rear main cap. Bearing is lubricated. Um, seal, you can tell the, the lip is going to the front. It also has been lubricated. Small touch of silicone where the cap meets the block and just a very small dab, just a, just a light coat where the seal ends meet. All right, crank is in, caps are torqued. We checked our crank uh, thrust play and I'll get that recorded. And now it's time to assemble some pistons and rods. All right, so here's our pistons and rods again. Um, custom race tech pistons with a shorter compression height because of our extra rod length. Um, these are an 8cc flat top. And uh, I'll get these assembled. And uh, if you don't, if you wanna watch and see how these are assembled, you can look at some of the other videos I've done on this. Um, scat rods, 5-400 length with a bushed little end, wrist pin bore, and a 3 8 cap screw. Uh, big chamfer always goes to your right on a Ford. Lube the wrist pin up. Put your locks in and you're done. All right, so pistons are hung on the rods. Got the bearings in it torqued. I'm getting ready to check our rod bearing clearances. And um, I don't know. I think I'm gonna knock it off after that. I just don't feel like I have a lot of energy. Um, test a positive Friday night. Had the worst case of chills I've had in, in a long time. And that was kind of like my first symptom other than my the back of my throat felt like it was coated. But I uh, just don't have a lot of energy right now. I've been in uh, separated from my family in a guest bedroom for since Friday. But uh, Crank Grinder allowed me to come over and he handed me the crank outside and then I rolled. But um, I'm going to try to get a little bit done. I'm, uh, I kind of hate just sitting around not doing anything. You know what I mean? Just, uh, I bore myself to death, and I just want to get some stuff done. So I'm going to push on a little bit longer and get these raw bearing clearances checked, 
and uh, I'll, I'll check back with you after that, see how I feel. It'll take me another half hour. All right, we're gonna get, I'm, I'm kind of gave myself a pep talk a minute ago, I guess. All the rod bearing clearances are checked. Uh, we're gonna get the piston rings on. I'm gonna put number one piston in the hole so I can have it ready for the next time that I come out. I don't know if I'll feel like coming to the shop tomorrow or what, but it'll be ready to uh, degree the cam and everything when when I'm ready. Get this number one piston knocked in. I know that uh, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on um, how to clock the piston rings, but the truth of the matter is that piston rings um, spin at about 12 RPMs. So they move as soon as the engine starts running. Gonna get our tapered ring compressor ready to go. Get this piston knocked in. All right, so at this point we check to make sure piston's in with the intake valve to the right, our big chamfer to the right. We got uh, oil on the rings and on the bearings. I like putting the crank at the bottom dead stroke. That way the rod doesn't have anything to, uh, to bounce off of. On its way down. Bada boom, bada beam. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna do is uh, zero our deck bridge out, and we're gonna see how well we came up on um, how far the piston is <laughs> in or out of the hole. Sorry, I didn't mean to sniff right in, in the camera. We're going to come to top dead center. So you can see this one shows six out. This one shows 10 out. So that's a good thing about a, uh, a dual bridge. So we're about eight thousandths out. All right, so I did get their timing set on and I am calling it an evening. Uh, this is a billet coys timing set with an ARP uh, camshaft bolt. Just a couple of things to note. You want to make sure that uh, the dowel pin is under the surface of the gear uh, so it's not causing the, uh, the bolt and the washer to stick out. And you wanna make sure that your gears are in in playing with each other. Camshaft bolt is torqued. I'm calling in the night. I'll talk to y'all later.